In this video, I would like to describe one of the most common skin lesion called seborrheic keratosis, including various subtypes. Here we have the macroscopic picture of, um, of seborrheic keratosis, uh, which is very common among elderly people. It is usually multiple, as we can see it here. Um, and it looks like hyperkeratotic papules measuring from several millimeters to one to two centimeters. Uh, it has usually brown color because of melanin uh, pigment content. It has papillomatous surface with greasy friable scales and it has classical stuck-on appearance. And here we see the classical microscopic appearance of uh, the most common acanthotic subtype of seborrheic keratosis. It is a superficial tumor forming elevated papule, uh, which consists of acanthotic, slightly pigmented epidermis with multiple horn cysts. The term acanthotic epidermis means uh, thicker epidermis, so we can compare the normal thin epidermis here uh, in the border of the picture uh, with, um, with acanthotic thick epidermis of the tumor, which consists of um, anastomosing reti ridges. On higher magnification, we can see that the tumor consists of uh, basaloid keratinocytes or basaloid cells, uh, which means um, that those are the cells that look like normal keratinocytes in the basal layer of the epidermis. However, the, probably the better description is that uh, the cells are roundish, slightly paler, uh, they are regular, uh, they have relatively larger nuclei than normal keratinocytes in the normal epidermis. There is a lot of melanin pigment in the epidermis, uh, which is responsible for the macroscopic brown color, and a specific subtype called melanoacanthotic seborrheic keratosis um, has a lot of melanin pigment and it has dark brown color. Uh, the main differential diagnosis is uh, melan melanocytic nevus in those cases. However, uh, this is just slightly pigmented seborrheic keratosis. Another characteristic feature is the presence of multiple horn cysts. As we can see it here, or maybe we should rather say pseudocysts because they communicate with the surface as we can see it here. And those uh, horn cysts uh, are characterized uh, by abrupt keratinization. Abrupt keratinization means that basaloid cells of the tumor suddenly mature into regular uh, keratin uh, lamellus. And these lamellae have no parakeratosis, so this is just hyperkeratosis, just keratin layers without uh, visible nucleoli. And that's very, a uh, very important feature because it is, um, uh, it is difference between squamous uh, cell carcinoma, where we have the cysts uh, with um, parakeratosis and seborrheic keratosis, where we have uh, horn cysts with abrupt keratinization without parakeratosis, unless the seborrheic keratosis is irritated the keratin inside of these horn cysts has uh, usually slightly bluish appearance on H and E stain, and um, uh, it is sometimes compared to the sky in Vincent van Gogh paintings. So let's have a look at this beautiful painting where the sky looks like horn cysts in the classical seborrheic keratosis. The surface is usually smooth, and the acanthotic epidermis does not protrude into the deeper layer of the dermis, um, and that is quite characteristic. Uh, the cells are bland, uh, with no mitotic figures, without any atypia. Well, this is another example. Again, acanthotic form of seborrheic keratosis, um, <clears throat> slightly elevated uh, tumor with smooth surface, with uh, acanthotic, uh, slightly pigmented epidermis, with multiple horn cysts with abrupt um, keratosis without any parakeratosis. This is the case of melanoacanthotic subtype of seborrheic keratosis, and we can see right away that the pigmentation is very 
very prominent and also macroscopically this lesion is dark brown and the other signs are similar as in common acanthotic form seborrheic keratosis uh, the surface in this case is slightly more papillomatous reticular form consists of multiple interconnected epithelial bands which are often only two cells uh, two cell layers thick so you can see it here so these anastomosing thin strands of epidermis uh, this is the characteristic sign of reticular seborrheic keratosis. Another uh, reticular subtype, it can look like this. Again, we see anastomosing thin strands uh, with quite prominent pigmentation. And again, classical uh, abrupt keratinization with concentric layers of keratin without parakeratosis. Some cases of seborrheic keratosis can be associated with prominent acantholysis, as this case. Acantholysis is the loss of intercellular connections or desmosomes, resulting in loss of cohesions, uh, cohesion between keratinocytes. So we can see these clear spaces all over, all over the tumor. So loss of the desmosomes and loss of the cohesion of the keratinocytes. And this is the clonal form of seborrheic keratosis uh, that is characterized by multiple nests of regular basaloid cells within the epidermis. On higher magnification, we can see sharply outlined nests of basaloid cells. And uh, we can also see that uh, there are no horn cysts and the acanthosis is very, very mild. So this represents the early stage of seborrheic keratosis. And uh, again, here we see the nests of basaloid cells within the epidermis. So the clonal subtype or clonal form of seborrheic keratosis. Okay, so that was the uh, description of the main subtypes of seborrheic keratosis. And thanks for watching.